Hello, I'm Sharon Wilson. I'm publisher of Resort Trades Magazine. If you're not familiar with Resort Trades, we are the premier magazine, independent magazine, I might say, for the timeshare industry and something of a community influencer, we like to hope. <laughs> At any rate, today we are going to have uh, Cheryl Cattell as our lunch bunch host or, or our guest. But before I actually introduce her, I did want to mention that if you missed any of our previous events, go to the your YouTube, uh, go to Resort Trades on your YouTube and uh, be sure and subscribe and hit the bell icon too so you'll be notified uh, if you intend to be part of this industry and want to become an influencer, influencer, we encourage your participation and are grateful. Uh, today's speaker, Cheryl Cattell, has been involved in digital marketing for 30 years, and uh, she'll provide us some great tips. <laughs> she'll provide us some great tips on LinkedIn uh, to build your personal brand, which I think is great for everybody, whether you are in a secure uh, position at this point or, or feel like that you want to explore opportunities in the future. So uh, she's founder of South Florida Interactive Marketing, uh, Hack Academy, and she's also a master certified life coach, very inspirational person, I might add. So Cheryl is going to be a frequent contributor to resort trades. As a matter of fact, you may not have your January issue yet of Resort Trades, but her article is on page 16. And uh, otherwise, you could go and look on resorttrades.com, and we will post her article there, uh, again, on LinkedIn. Uh, but she'll be covering a lot of different subjects in months to come. So i uh, going to be, thank you, Cheryl, for your willingness to contribute to our to our community so uh as we move forward we'd like you to join the conversation feel free to chat uh also answer polls uh welcome Mar Mar mariana uh john uh we uh, expect there are about uh almost 100 people waiting to get online so hopefully we'll uh oh boy amelia alexandra thank you welcome so be sure when you go on to the youtube channel and go to resort trades channel be sure and enter your comments and questions we'll try and keep up with that so uh Cheryl, without further ado, we'll launch your slideshow and you can begin. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Sharon. Uh, after 10 years at Blue Green Resorts, I have a lot of uh, admiration and, and love for resort trades. It was uh, definitely on my reading list every month. And it's exciting now to be a contributor to it. And thank you for this invitation. It's wonderful. Um, I love the opportunity to be able to share a little bit of knowledge. Um, I think it like the secret sauce, right? And um, I'm really excited to share today about LinkedIn. So, all right, let's get started. I think you've heard a little bit about me. I don't think I need to go into too much detail, but uh, I have had an illustrious career uh, in corporate America, working for Travelocity, Mary Kay, E-Diets, Bank of America, and the one that's uh, probably the dearest to my heart is Blue Green Resorts. I spent 10 years there and uh, was really instrumental in going from, uh, from uh, brochureware to a fully functioning website for their owners. And um, about 75% of all their transactions are now done online. So very proud of that. Uh, two interactive marketing associ associations, one in Dallas and one in South Florida. I'm also an adjunct instructor at uh, uh, the University of San Francisco. Uh, I was also an uh, adjunct at the UVA McIntyre School of Business, uh, Central Michigan University. Uh, and as Sharon mentioned, I am a digital marketing coach for the BizHack Academy. I do speak from time to time at FAU in their digital marketing class as well as their MBA class. So. 
I was lucky enough to spend four years overseas. I got to live in Brussels, Belgium, working for Dale Corning and crazy things, Hatha Yoga Pranayama instructor. And just recently, just in September, I founded the Personal Legend Coaching. So if anybody hasn't read The Alchemist, uh, that will probably give you a clue as to where the name came from. All right, let's jump in. What are we gonna talk about? LinkedIn, very cool. Uh, why does LinkedIn matter? We're going to cover that. Um, we're going to view a chance to put to do your own social um, selling sk uh, score. This is important. You want to have a benchmark because after you leave today, you're going to want to put some of these tips and tricks into place. So let's take the before score, put some things in place, and then you're going to want to come back later in probably a couple months and see how you're doing. Uh, we're going to talk about how you can grow your connections. We're going to Give you, I'm going to give you the secret insight to LinkedIn post algorithms. And uh, we'll talk about engagement pods as well as using LinkedIn events. This is something uh, that's just now coming of age and is probably the reason why we have so many of you here today. All right. We're going to start with a poll. Carrie, can you put the poll up for us and um, just give me an idea as to when we get a, a, a critical mass? Um, the wonderful thing about polls, and I'm, here I'm going to tell you about LinkedIn. You have the ability to create polls on LinkedIn. Probably some of you have taken them. If you haven't ever created one, I highly recommend it. It's a great way, you know, when you make a post, uh, what happens is, you know, maybe you'll get a couple of comments. Um, but unless somebody's feeling very, very engaged in your topic, they probably won't comment. When you post a poll, it's almost an invitation to engage with you. So I posted this on the LinkedIn event page. And just I want to share with you the uh, results. 60% of those who took the poll on LinkedIn said that they post every single day. All right, so Carrie, can you see what the results are for our group here to see how we're doing? Sarah, let's see. I go here. All right, so it looks like uh, the blue moon uh, is almost tied <laughs> with a few times a week. All right, so what is recommended? It is recommended a few times a week is not a bad place to start. Um, however, if you're going to get the maximum benefit, I do a post every single day. Uh, I call it my daily inspirations. So um, maybe you don't have that much to say. But if you're doing um, a, something on a weekly basis, I think you're better than the average bear. Now, if you recall, I said that the online poll had about 60% doing daily. Why? Because those people are engaged. They were online. They saw it. So. That's probably why those who participated in the poll online had such a high percentage. All right, so don't don't uh, don't distress if you're not doing it every day. A couple times a week's fine. All right, yes. So this is the results of the online poll. As I mentioned, almost sixty percent. And so there's the never or once in a blue moon at fourteen. All right. Who cares? Why is LinkedIn important? So I want to share with you, it is absolutely the largest social networking platform for B2B. If you're in business, if you're a professional, if you have a company that, in it, that does B2B, if you recruit, if you're looking for a job, uh, there's over 675 million people uh, across 200 countries. So. What's not shown on this chart that you're looking at right now is that there's 46 million students and recent graduates, as well as, I know, 80 million millennials. So millennials are not only on TikTok, they're also on LinkedIn, right? So um, we're seeing a, a, an increase of, of professionals using and spending more time on social media. So this is a perfect opportunity, perfect time to jump in to, with both feet. All right, here's more interaction. Um, Carrie, if you wouldn't mind, put the uh, link to the social selling index. And I'm gonna give uh, a little bit of uh, information about this, but what I need you to be doing right now is I need you to click on that link and get your free score. If you click on the link, there'll be a box and it's on the left side and it says, get your free score now. 
And that's what you want to do. You may have to log into LinkedIn if you're not already logged in, like some of us always. Um, but that's a great place uh, to start. This is to get your benchmark. It's really important. Now, once you get your score, what I'd like you to do is, if you wouldn't mind, sharing it in the chat. So Jennifer, I know that you're, uh, you're out there. So if you wouldn't mind, let us know uh, where, what your score is right now. I'm sharing with you my score here. So I have a 74, which out of 100, uh, you know, nothing to brag about, right? The great thing is, hey, Jackie, hey, Cassidy. Um, uh, the great thing about this is it also ranks you within your own industry. So for people that identify in the same industry as me, I'm in the top 1%. So even though 74 out of 100 doesn't seem very exciting, um, it's actually one per, top 1% 1 is not bad. Same thing with uh, my network. So these are all the people that I'm linked to in LinkedIn. Um, I'm in the top 4%. Now I'm expecting or hoping to see some of you brave folks willing to admit what your score is. Anybody want to share their score in chat? That would be the best place to do it. All right. Uh, I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing anybody. Nobody wants to share. No, I am seeing all kinds. Oh, oh. Devin oh. 54, Maya 54, Laurel 56. Oh, I see it. Okay, great. Thank you. Oh, wonderful. No, Joel, Joseph, I'm, I can't believe you're a one. All right. Well, not bad. So we've got some 48, some 57, some 34s. All this means is uh, this is my, my, my recommendation or my approach. Whenever you get some feedback, um, just use it as a growth opportunity, right? So the way you get your scores, click on the link that was in the chat and it'll take you to a page and it says, get your free score. It's on the left-hand side of the page, get your free score. You will need to link, link, log into LinkedIn. All right. Okay, well, um, so you just got some great feedback. Remember that score so that once you take some of the tools that we learned today, you're gonna go back and see how you did. What did you learn? How well did it affect your score? All right, first thing, don't please, don't forget to do this. This is so important. You want to keep your profile updates just to yourself. You don't want to share this to the world, all right? Are you with me? So the first thing you need to do is go to settings. Okay, you'll see it right here under your view profile when you're up in the me, the very, very, very top level of, of LinkedIn, there's a me. And right below that is settings and privacy. And then scroll down till you get to this section right here, visibility. What you want to do is sh turn off any updates you make. And the reason is you're going to be making a lot of updates. So you want to be able to do this without spamming all of your friends and connections. All right? Number one. Number two. I highly recommend you get a professional headshot or a have a friend with a very good camera who's willing to shoot something of you with a, a muted or a very, very plain background photo. Also, you can see here, this is real estate. I wanna talk about this real estate because it is so oftentimes overlooked. This is the uh, akin to owning a building with a blank wall on it in one of the busiest intersections of your city or town. If you don't put something here, it is a, a, a missed opportunity. For example, it, this is typically, we call this the LinkedIn banner right here. And here I've put some pictures of things of people that I've had ex, uh, experience with. Uh, oh, I see, okay, um, in, in my life. And uh, it tells something about me. It tells what's important to me, like the HSMAI, the Hospitality Sales and Marketing, Association, Romeo Brito, uh, a, a, a talk that he did uh, under w working with me about creativity and web design. And of course, Bill Clinton, um, I, do I need to say more? Anyway, what you wanna do here is find some way to communicate something about yourself, something that makes you unique, something that someone could relate to. 
this is also a great opportunity because a lot of times people have a hard time thinking, what do I put up here? What do I do? This is an opportunity for a company also to potentially use this real estate. Let me give you an example. Starmark just launched uh, a wonderful virtual um, office program where all of their employees, a few hundred employees, got the 3D Oculus. And they now participate in their meetings in virtual reality with 3D avatars. What a great opportunity to put up in this banner here uh, the, the Starmark logo, um, a virtual room, and the individual's avatar. It's a great recruiting tool. It's also a great opportunity, a great exposure for Starmark and a branding. So that's something you do want to take advantage of, and I'm constantly amazed at how few people do. The next thing you want to do, or what we're going to talk about on this page, is you want to make sure that you edit your headline. So don't just default to the job you have now with the company that you're working with now. You want to make sure that you put your desired job title and then also add any credentials that you have. So for me, I'm a master certified life coach, an MBA, a certified scrum master, as well as a scrum product owner certification. So that's what the space here, this is a good use of this space, all right? All right, let's move along. About, this about is an opportunity for you to tell your story. It is, should be in first person. You wanna tell something about you that isn't going to become obvious just by looking at your resume or your jobs or your experience. So in, in this case, you also have the opportunity to add some co uh, core competencies, uh, things that you feel that you um, excel at. You may want to list the industries you've worked in, for example. Now, this can continue to go on. And in this case, I've added related job experiences. And these are jobs that if I put them on my LinkedIn profile would make me look old because I've been around a few years. And so I didn't want to lose the fact that I worked in Brussels, that I worked for Travelocity, Mary Kay, and E-Diets. But I stopped my experience just in the last 10 or 15 years. And so 10 of that has been with Blue, was at Blue Green. So it, it didn't make sense, but I wanted to be able to capture it here. Uh, you'll also see I list some of my technical skills here and some of the software and status, uh, platforms that I'm used to or methodologies, etc. All right. Oh, I forgot to mention this lion. So this is not like lion, like Argh! this is a LinkedIn open networker. What this means is, is that if somebody reaches out to me and if you have a headshot and a few uh, uh, contacts, I'm a good person to invite to uh, to connect with because I will say yes. All right, this is just a way of signaling that if you're somebody that has very few contacts and you make a commitment after this session to increase your number of uh, contacts, you wanna reach out and do a search for lions because they're your friends. They're gonna say yes if you reach out to connect with them. All right, so I think we got it. Um, there might be one or two of you in the audience who might be looking for a job. Or maybe you have your own agency or you're uh, an ind independent uh, provider. This is a great opportunity. Oh, remember I talked about the background. Do you see this red arrow here? Never use this background. This signals that you are a LinkedIn amateur. All right? This is valuable real estate. Please use it. All right, I wanted to show you what it looked like in case yours looked this way. All right, so here's an opportunity. You can indicate that you're open to work, and this is where it's located here on your profile, and you can and activate it. I recommend this for contractors, people who do work on an hourly basis and already have a job. You're open to work, right? The next thing you need to do is in your um, experience, you want to add a current position. And that is uh, looking for new opportunity, right? That is the present company. That's the name of the company that you work for when you're doing the drop downs in the, in the experience area. That way, it's going to come right up here, top and center. 
When you add your current position, list the position you're looking for, a digital executive, a life coach, whatever it is you're looking to get. This makes sure that recruiters and hiring companies can easily find you. And if you are looking for a job, I highly recommend you turn on this open to work. That'll put that green circle. All right, moving right along. Exciting. Hopefully you're going to walk away with a couple of gold nuggets. <laughs> All right. The next thing is grow your connections. So I have probably around five or 6,000 connections. Um, in my network, that's not that many. I know people that have 20, 25,000. Uh, it's my aspiration. But always, whenever you go to something like this class, make sure you reach out, share your LinkedIn uh connect your LinkedIn uh, URL and let people know that you want to connect. And I also recommend you be diligent and whenever you meet somebody, do it right away. It is best practices to in to leave a, put a note as to how did you meet them? How do you know them? And why are you asking? Unless of course they're a lion and then they are your friends. The next thing and then someday, someday soon, I hope, we will be post COVID and there's this wonderful thing called nearby. LinkedIn has this great tool that will work on your cell phone with Bluetooth that you can actually in a conference or in some, let's say you attend a, a, a seminar, you can turn this on and then click on this floating circle. This is what it looks like on your phone. You'll see this little floating circle here. And that'll bring up everybody who has Bluetooth turned on and is willing to connect. So you can just go down the list and quickly increase your connections as well as have meaningful connections. The other tip I'll give you for increasing the number of contacts that you have is join groups and then find people in the group that are in this, have same, the same common interest as you and then ask them if they would like to connect. Mention the group, oh, I'm part of South Florida Interactive Marketing Association. It might be good for us to connect. So there's some tips. So hopefully you will be up in the thousands. All right, what else? What else can we do on LinkedIn that will help get our social selling skill up? Recommendations and kudos. LinkedIn loves it. So. Here's where you find the recommendations and kudos. So here I've circled kudos. And then this is also where you can request recommendations. I highly recommend that you have at least 10, as many as 15 recommendations. And I, I like to suggest that you get one from every company and volunteer organization you've worked with. That's kind of a goal. And, and so what you want to do is go through your contacts wherever you work and just reach out to them and say, hey, I'd like it if you, would, if you wouldn't mind giving me a recommendation of our work together. What you give, you get back. So also, it's great if you reach out and give somebody a recommendation. What better way to ask for one than to give one, right? So that's my recommendations on recommendations and try to think of somebody you can give a kudo to today after we leave um, it's it, it really helps your algorithm and LinkedIn really rewards for it so all right moving right along this is probably the juiciest thing that I'm going to share with you this is relatively new it's a way to boost your news feed views and I'm going to get share with you a case study when I was at Nordis, I would share our uh, bi-weekly blog articles. And so what happened is, as you know, I'd put my little blurb, I would put it out, put my hashtags and put my, my favorite friends, and then I would post it. And this was about average. If you look in the bottom left of the screen, you'll see about 110 views of your post, which it's a little disappointing, especially if you spend a lot of time writing a blog and then all you get is 100 views. So I went to a, a webinar similar to this that uh, Maria Rudkin and uh, Eric uh, gave, and this is what they shared with me, and I'm just paying it forward. The trick to LinkedIn um, posts in order to get them to stay in the newsfeed longer and to get more views. 
you post your text plus an image. The easy way out is just put a link to a URL and that's so easy, it's almost like falling off a log. But what LinkedIn is looking for is they want you to keep people in LinkedIn. They don't want you sending people off to uh, your blog, for example. So if you put the text and whatever image it was you were going to use, then put the link, if you look on the bottom right here, read the article here. Notice the article is in the first comment. Then you want to add three hashtag tags and three at profiles. The three hashtags are, should be ones that your company is already using or ones that speak to people in your industry that might be interested in this article. I've been reading about hashtags and I know it wasn't a believer, but there's firm evidence that hashtags totally boost views of your uh, content. The three at signs, these are three profiles. These are people that you can count on that you know will come and comment on your, on your post. Now, why is this important? LinkedIn rewards posts that get five comments in the first 30 minutes. I'm going to say that again. It's very important. Not likes, not, not loves, five comments in the first 30 minutes. So that's what you want to be shooting for. And so you've got to make sure you, when you tag somebody, that they're going to come and actually help the cause. All right, so, and in this case, I want to show you this just one month later using these tricks, I was able to increase or improve the boost of my views from 110 to 1170. That is, that's something to take to the bank. That's amazing, right? Here you can see I've circled it, 1170 views of the post. I did the same thing with um, a Safima event. This was Peter Shankman. He's the former owner of Help a Reporter Out, the Harrow. And I did the same thing. Text and image, link was in the first comment, three to five profiles, uh, at signs, and three hashtags. I was able to get five comments in 30 minutes. This one went up to 1,500. So I've even seen uh, Guy Kawasaki. He actually had a case study on the same exact thing. And he showed this similar post for him using this method methodology versus before. He would get around, only, if I could only wish, 27,000 views. Doing this, he was able to increase it by about 150,000. So what I'm telling you is even very seasoned uh, posters and people with millions of followers have, can benefit from this. So why not you? All right, so now here's the interactive part again. Um, Carrie, if you could post the, uh, the poll uh, right now. And I would like to know, of those of you who are on with us today, um, how many of you have ever used a pod, a LinkedIn pod, or any kind of pod? All right, we'll give you a few minutes to answer that. I'm going to tell you what the, um, I did the same poll. I put a poll like this up on LinkedIn uh, as part of this event. And only 10% of the people who responded to the poll said that they used a pod. So there's a lot of extra, there's a lot of opportunity here for growth. All right, never used a pod, so okay. Good job. Um, did we, let's see, I've got to go to the poll. Let me see. All right. So what the heck is a pod? <laughs> All right. 55% or no. And we're just about on the average. So not bad. Great. I'm going to tell you some new information. How exciting. Um, I love it. Okay. Um, next slide. Here we go. I'm going to talk to you about pods. They're called engagement pods. These pods form many different reasons, but most pods uh, are comprised of the people who would like to comment and share on each other's LinkedIn posts. This is a commitment. This is you saying, if you comment on mine, I'll comment on yours. And it's not liking, it's meaning take the time to read the post and actually make a comment that is intelligent, that adds value. 
ideally a pod has between 20 and 30 people in it. And I can't say this enough. It is not about you posting and everybody commenting on yours. It's a reciprocal relationship. Now, if you want to create a pod, you can go to messages, compose a message, name the pod, and add members. If you, um, Carrie, if you wouldn't mind, there is a wonderful article that was uh, written by Josh Stein, uh, Style, Steinley, and you can find everything you need to know about starting a pod, an engagement pod. However, if you'd like to join a pod, just send me uh, on LinkedIn, send me a PM or a DM, and I can add you to one. So that's um, another option if you're not ready to start one on your own. The other thing is there has to be rules. So it's important everyone understand the rules of being in the pod. The pods that I am in typically commit to Tuesdays and Thursdays between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. to go and help each other out. That way I don't have to feel guilty if I'm not able to be on LinkedIn all day and all night. So it's really important that you have under, everyone understands the rules and that way, for us, between 9, uh, 9 and 10 a.m., that's when I've dedicated, not my whole hour, but I've dedicated at some point to go in and make comments on other people's pods, or posts, <laughs> pods, posts, whatever. All right. So that's a little bit about pods. There are pros and cons. There are definitely, um, the, pods are not endorsed by LinkedIn. So... But the pros are this, it works. It does amplify your reach. It is also, this is what actually one of my favorite things. It is a great networking and collaboration tool within the pod. For me, I get to keep up on, on friends that maybe I won't see their, their news feed post, but because I'm in their pod and because I guarantee them I'll go twice a week and look at what they're doing, I get to engage with them. Pods are also a phenomenal way to engage employees and to leverage employees who you want to help get the message out. So these are the pros of pods. Cons. Superficial engagement is not good. That's why the likes and the good post or thanks for sharing, they don't count. They really have to be genuine comments. And it takes time to do this right. That's part of your commitment. As I said, LinkedIn doesn't endorse this activity. Um, so who knows? Maybe it'll go away. But for now, and it's been, I've been doing this since, uh, the, since early summer. Organic and genuine engagement is definitely best. If you can do that, you don't need pods, right? But pods are great until your organic engagement builds. I actually know several people who said, I don't need pods anymore, but they were a lifesaver in the beginning. And that's what this is. It's this uh, an oasis, a pod, for you to get that engagement built up. All right. There's uh, pros and cons. Now, if you're, if you're posting, I thought it would be good to share with you where the best times are to post. Um, in general, uh, you can see kind of this sweet spot here. This is the darker the blue, the more people on and engaging on LinkedIn. So this is kind of the sweet spot of where you want to be. Um, the safest times overall, Tuesdays through Fridays between 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. Um, you can't go wrong. Now, if you're trying to post something you don't want anybody to see, right, Sundays uh, between 9, and 3 9 p.m. and 3 a.m., uh, don't ask me why, but if you wanted to post something no one saw, that would be when you'd want to do it. All right, so the benefit, I'm going to talk about LinkedIn events, and I haven't been using them very long, um, but this is, there are some amazing benefits. Now, there's two ways you can do LinkedIn events. Much like we did today, you put an event up and then you put a link to whatever platform you're using. That's Okay, it's pretty good, but there are some cons of that. The pros are it's very, very good for hosting any business-related topic. Excellent. You can also very, very easily invite your contacts 
And that's why if you have a lot of contacts, uh, for example, 6,900, uh, you can easily reach out to them. And I'll show you the tricks of how to do that. Because when you first go to invite your contacts, it looks like you have to do each one individually. Thankfully, Carrie, thank you, by showing me how to invite by industry and company, you can do 40, 50 at a time, which makes it a lot easier. All right. The other benefit of using LinkedIn events is that you can get a one-click acceptance. It's easy for somebody to opt in. They don't have to fill out a form. There's no typing. Make it easy. Make it as, as simple as possible. The other thing is your event will get visibility in the news feed. You'll get a notification when the event is about to happen. I want to point this out over here on the right, Carrie, if I could jump my brain, my, my face around. On the right, this is what you see when you go to my network. Whenever you get an invitation to connect with somebody, which I hope after today, you're going to get a whole bunch of those. Um, this is what you see. Uh, you'll see upcoming events, right? So here, how to acquire language students, uh, cocktails with the... These are chosen based on things like the 2021 digital marketing trends. They've chosen these events because they think it's something that I would be interested in, a senior product manager at Nike. Your event could end up here based on the algorithm they use, which is a wonderful opportunity for you to get 14,600 attendees, right? That's the idea. So um, that's another benefit. The cons. Let's talk about the cons. You are not able to force your participants to use a registration link. That means you probably will have to enter into a third-party event site if you're using one. That means you go to the page, you download the event people who have RSVP'd, and then you put them into Eventbrite, Zoom, or whatever you're using. There's also no calendar reminder. And... The last thing I want to make sure you're aware of is when you download the report, it there is a true false, and it's not real clear what that is. What that is is true means you can add them to any communications you have beyond the event. False means you may not. You may only communicate with the person who's opted in for the purposes of that event. So important things to know about LinkedIn events. Some great, uh, some great tools. All right, I want to show you what this looks like. Um, here you can see this is the event for today. We had, uh, I think we ended up with about 389 people who had opted in. And then you can see, I'm showing you right here, this blue circle. This is where you invite your connections. Now, before Carrie told me, um, I would you what you get is a list and there and this box right up here the the one that's in the red square that does not appear until you um, okay transparency oh thank you thank you so much Carrie what happens is that will not appear unless you limit your list by choosing for example the um, current com uh, companies or you can choose uh, universities or whatever. So that's the only way you can get, oh, I see. Oh, thank you. Uh, that's the only way you can get this little check mark so you can invite 41 people at a time with one click. This is very um, a very powerful tool, uh, and I'm so thankful to Carrie that she showed me how to do that. So, all right, moving along, I think. Yeah, we're going to wrap up with enough time. I was hoping I could take some uh, some questions, so I'm excited. Um, one thing, just pick one thing. Don't yeah, I don't know. I'm I've just finished reading the book, uh, the one thing, and I I love the philosophy. Just just pick the one thing that is going to make everything else you're trying to do easier or not necessary. I, I love that. That's the premise of the book. So just pick one thing from today, the one thing that you think is going to have the biggest impact, and just do it, right? Just like Nike says, get a professional headshot. If anybody living here in Florida needs somebody, I've got a person who will come to your house with a mask, do beautiful headshots, and he also can bring a makeup artist with him, for those of us who may have a, a flaw or two. 
Um, and he charges $100 for the photos and $100 for um, the makeup artists. Reach out to me, happy to share that. But do at least get a good quality image with a blank or very muted background. Please don't let that real estate go to waste at the top of your, of your profile. Add a bank background image. Do not look like a LinkedIn amateur. And another thing you could do is give five recommendations. The best way to get five back, all right? Maybe find five people or at least one person you can give a kudos to. This is so powerful and it will definitely increase your interaction engagement scores. Then I recommend you set a goal. How many connections do you want to have by, say, a date? And then go for it. I mean, make it part of your daily routine. Go and, and find those business cards you've stuck in your drawer, uh, you've been carrying around. Uh, go through your contact list and reach out to connections. Go through by company, sort by company, find people you've worked with before and, and reach out to them. So make it a point that you want to, to improve your social selling score. And then another thing you could do, join a pod, join my pod, right? Um, Carrie, if you could put my LinkedIn uh, URL in the chat, uh, I would like to encourage all of you. I would love every person, but then again, I probably am already connected to a lot of you, um, to reach out to me. Uh, I'm happy to share every, this is for me, this is the meaning of life. Um, you know, we just give and receive. Uh, that's what we're here for. I am so happy to be able to, to share something with you that I hopefully uh, will make your life and your profile even better. Uh, the last thing I was going to, to offer was uh, I do a one-on-one -on -one, uh, LinkedIn profile uh, update. If uh, there's anybody that wants to do that, I'll literally go through your LinkedIn profile uh, line by line and we'll bring it bring it into shape. Uh, I do that uh, and I'm willing to offer anyone who's here a $50 coupon. It's usually a $200 cost, but uh, because you sat through today and if you're still interested and you still want more, I'm happy to give you that $50 coupon. Again, just reach out to me on LinkedIn, tell me, DM me and say, hey, I, I want to sign I want to sign up for this or hey, my son just uh, graduated uh, from college and he needs your help. Uh, I'm, it's funny because I'm doing a lot of uh, uh, parent-child uh, LinkedIn profile updates right now, and uh, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. I'm loving it. I'm so lucky. That's all I had. Um, Sharon? Yes, thank you. That has been just remarkable. I, I've taken a slew of notes. Well, uh, look, well look some more uh, uh, events of this type. And the best way to do that is to uh, sign up for our Resort Trades Weekly. You can find the link or uh, the registration page, if you will, on our website, resorttrades2ts.com. Uh, and that That's way, every Wednesday, we send out an uh, e-newsletter about the resort industry. But we also have a lot of other content obviously that is not necessarily resort it's personal growth and professional growth people who want to develop their businesses and we want to just kind of unite our family and we need that uh, yeah exactly particularly at this time so our next uh presentation will be amy lipka on friday january 22nd at 1 o'clock eastern time amy as many of you know her as an, a long time rci alum and she is uh, now managing director of seven across which is the uh kind of relaunch of uh, dial and exchange dae so uh definitely want to key in if you want to keep up with what is going on with seven across and so many other brands uh, that are coming out of the Wyndham Destinations uh, mm. slash Panorama uh, group, definitely you'll want to attend on the 22nd, 1 o'clock. And again, go to resorttrades.com backslash learning center and register. Register today while you think about it.
<laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody, very much. And uh, everybody have a good day. Right. I put my LinkedIn profile link there. So please reach out if you want any anything I can help with. Thank and you. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank, thank you very you. much. Very thank worthwhile. You. All right.